This is a very funny story, but I was in Denver at the time and I was playing in a club with my band and Harry Belafonte walked into my club. He was doing four concerts in the Denver area and one of his singers was sick. And he said, do you read music? And I said, yes. And he said, could you sit backstage and sing these parts? And I did for the first two concerts and then they threw me in a costume. <laughs> and I went out on stage for the last two concerts. And at that point he said to me, uh, I want you to join the band. I ended up quitting my job uh, and moving to New York and I've never stopped working in the business since. Now that was a very lucky opportunity for me, but if I hadn't been prepared musically in advance of that opportunity, I never would have gotten that job. I have certain goals in mind for my students when they get out of this program. I want them to be great readers. I want them to be good improvisers. I want them to have a good sense of business, you know, good head on their shoulders when they step out. And I also want them putting themselves in places where they can build the networks and the opportunities for something like that to happen. That same ability yeah. that unlike poetry, mm -hmm. lyrics have to have a flow to them. Do you want to tell me the lyrics first? So yeah, sure. My goal in teaching is always to bring out the individual artistry of the student. So to find out what they're passionate about, to find out what kind of music excites them, and then steer them in that direction of finding their own voice. I think that's super important. A great mentor of mine, when I first started teaching, and I asked him, should I be doing this? He, he said to me, there's an old quote that says, to teach is to learn twice. And that's absolutely true because I've learned as much from my students as I think they've learned from me. We're not too proud to clean. Oberlin students are very special. Uh, they are very serious. Uh, and that's what I love. Uh, they come here to work. We do use a conservatory method. So um, a student who comes to Oberlin to study jazz voice would be with me for the entire four years. And it, it, this, this is so good in a certain way because it really allows us to get to know each other very well. And it allows a lot of the fine tuning um, that can happen when you have that kind of relationship to occur. We start out again understanding where the sensibilities of the student lie. And then we begin to work on the technique, the things that will make their, their instrument the strongest that it can be. But also to really respecting and understanding the art form of black American music, which jazz is under, right? Uh, we want to respect the traditions of the music. I want my students to understand the origins of the music and the roots of where it came from, because this was born out of social conflict and strife. And it's important for them to understand that. So it's not just about learning the notes or learning how to scat or learning how to improvise, but also really understanding that there's a large and rich cultural history that's underneath all of that music. And once um, students begin to really understand that, then I think that's when the music comes to life. Great tune for you. Mm -hmm. Great, great tune for you.